to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Psalm 78 and verse 72. Speaking about David, the Bible says, so he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and he guided them by the skillfulness of his hands so two things were at play here number one was the integrity of his heart but number two the skillfulness of his hands ministry in the end time will require a an interplay of many factors please listen in every generation God will always find a people and apportion them across territories now according to God's modus operandi you have to understand this his his kingdom come agenda is territorial in nature that means even though you are called to the whole world but he apportions your impact according to territories so he says you shall be witnesses unto me acts chapter 1 and verse 8 he would have just said all over the earth that would have been clear enough but he now said jerusalem samaria judea and then to the uttermost part of the earth are we together that means in the mind of god no territory should lack apostolic and prophetic voices that coordinates the spiritual activity over that territory you will know when a territory is bankrupt of spiritual leaders because there are certain things that will not be in place spiritual leadership in god's economy is more powerful than political leadership because they are the shapers of the spiritual understanding of a people so when you see a widespread error or a widespread prevalent of prevalence of darkness within a territory the spiritual leaders in that territory are to be held responsible every territory should have a strong presence of apostolic and prophetic voices when i talk of apostolic voices i'm not talking title uh, you hope i understand what i'm saying yes so any good state we can go around the length and breadth of this city and bring back a report card of the extent the quality and the efficiency of the spiritual leaders within this city when you find a city where darkness has been driven away you find a city where the crime rate is minimal you find a city with responsible young men who are lovers of god and also agents of national transformation that state will be credited to the quality and the understanding of the spiritual leaders when you find a lopsided spiritual view for instance when you find a territory where people are men and women of prayer and fasting but are highly irresponsible people that also is a reflection of the quality of the teachings that come from the altar when you find people who love money and love the things of this world and do not concentrate on their spiritual health it is also a reflection of the quality of the teachings africa is the most religious continent all over the world and africans and nigerians and people from all of these regions are very loyal to their spiritual leaders that means that every spiritual leader especially in the fivefold ministry has a rare advantage of shaping the spiritual understanding of people it matters what about god was told you it matters the construction of your spiritual understanding because it becomes the basis upon which your conviction stands are we together so ministry is a very serious business because destinies are at the mercy of not the truth you give but how you communicate it 
truth is like a knife you can still use it to kill are we blessed you've always heard me talk about the sequential arrangement of spiritual truth just because it is true and just because it is in the bible does not mean it will profit you by default it's profiting is in the order of priority when we overstress things that are minors are we together now and then we major on minors and minor on majors for instance that in itself can destroy the saints so i give you an instance according to god's system when you get born again now I, I don't i don't mean to be negative or to be sarcastic when you get born again the first message you should not you should listen to is not wealth and prosperity because at that time you are still a carnal person the impulses of the flesh is still alive in you you have not come to a point whereby the instrument of the ministry of the holy spirit you have not been broken enough to hand over everything to christ so chances are that when if all the message you hear from that point of infancy is just prosperity and all of that if you are not careful all that will happen to you is just a marketing of lust are we together now because you have not yet been taught kingdom so the purpose of that wealth and prosperity has not even been known so chances are you'll be lying down on every car you see claiming it and saying in the name of jesus and and it doesn't mean you are a sinner it just means you are immature the sequential arrangement of spiritual truth is as important as the truth itself the bible says line upon line precept upon precept there is something that when you know teaching you about prosperity now becomes very profitable there is something that if you know teaching you about marriage or about influence now becomes profitable there is something that if you know teaching you about ministry administration and excellence is important but when as a minister if all you know for instance is just administration principles and excellence as wonderful as that is you will produce a very lopsided uh, people because all that they will be concerned about is just the physical appearance i'm looking good everything is working fine and they will be lean and dead and hungry spiritually so there is need for the sequential arrangement of spiritual truth so that it can profit the believers but my point here is that every territory is a reflection of the kind and the quality and even the presence of the spiritual leaders there if you're with me say amen. amen when satan wants to destroy a territory he does not necessarily go to every house house by house to plague people that's too much work for him all he needs to do is to limit the spiritual understanding of the leaders so that their communications are lopsided and on the strength of that aberrated view they will continue to mentor people outside their limitation and so after a long period of time you will find out that a dimension of the kingdom is not represented in that territory respectfully speaking there are territories when you go to you look around that territory you find out that the spirit of prayer is not strong in that territory when you see a corporate deficiency it came from the leaders there are territories where the giving grace is very small it is a reflection of the biases of those who have mentored the people within that territory there are territories when you go to marriages absolutely do not work for instance there are territories when you go to there is bankruptcy of high level spiritual intelligence because what we consume is out of what we are fed with are we together so a pastor's conference is very necessary because it helps to file us to open us to greater doors of spiritual understanding paul was speaking to the church in Colossae, chapter 1 and verse 9 colossians 1 verse 9 he prayed a prayer that we be filled with number one the knowledge of his will number two all wisdom and number three spiritual understanding these are the boundaries of our growth are we together and many people continue to wonder why it looks like even though there are many pastors in a territory 
many well-meaning sincere men of god who love god with all their hearts it looks like the dimension of kingdom reality and the forcefulness of the kingdom is not captured in our experience we do not yet see the manifestation of the kingdom the power and the glory of god to the degree that should be seen and when i talk of the power of god i'm not just talking of shouting and falling down i'm talking of the reality of the kingdom superimposing culture superimposing our territories are we together now and so i want to share with us within these few minutes a few keys that have helped me in my life these are not just my experiences number one there are principles that are consistent with the character of god number two there are wisdom keys that have come from the life of proven patriarchs many of them who have gone to be with the lord i had the privilege of receiving a very balanced mentorship from strong people across the body of christ many who have now gone to be with the lord and i'm grateful and honored for the privilege to have received these pieces and these dimensions from them because they define the coordinate of balance for me and it helped me to be efficient today as a minister it is important that we are balanced imbalance is worse than error are we together number one i have found out from scripture and from the lives of men and women who have been mightily used by god and continue to be used by god across the globe that there are certain essentials that must be in the life of a minister in order for him to be very efficient and to be productive and to be a worthy host of the power the grace the glory of god number one very quickly i'll be as simple as possible so that we can pray our time is gone the first that i found out is called the fear of the lord the fear of the lord this is the highest representation of your love and your passion for god the fear of the lord first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 if you love god sincerely and you are passionate about him it must be reflected in your reverence for him he says but as it is written so this is written and remember anything that is written cannot be changed i had not seen that means this dimension we are getting to even the spirit of revelation those who walk in that dimension of revelation cannot access this number two nor ear heard there is a dimension of the prophetic that cannot get to this realm it says neither has it entered into the heart of man there is a level of understanding and illumination that cannot take you there the things that god has prepared not for prayer warriors not for fasting giants not for apostles and prophets for them that love him now the way god operates is that there is a body of light that is given to everyone in the kingdom but there is the hallowed bread of the spirit that is not accessible to everyone this one is a reward as a token of your passion and your press towards the things of god i assure you not everything in the kingdom is public there are dimensions of spiritual reality that are not gifts they are rewards they come to you for your dedicated press towards the things of the spirit that god can hold your hand and take you to the hallowed chambers of the spirit and begin to show you the mysteries that make for dominion over territories and over nations i has not seen ear has not heard notice he never mentioned the name of a man of god here notice it never even mentioned a minister that there is a level of the fear of the lord there is a level of your love and your passion for god passion greater than fame passion greater than ministry passion greater than church passion greater than apostle joshua selman passion greater than the applause of men 
our obsession for recognition our obsession to be known our obsession for a name if not curbed may become our unbecoming as far as our rising in ministry is concerned there is a requisite level of humility and recognition that a servant of god must carry in order to host superior dimensions of spiritual things many times we brag and we boast about many things we do not have the grace to defend just knowing that this is a possibility in the kingdom and teaching it is one thing but sustaining the grace required god i pray and even now on this stage i'm saying it may it never come to me i don't care what it is i can drop this mic a thousand times to preserve my relationship with god I will kick my reputation like a football and let it go places if I will preserve his presence. I'm saying this because especially for some of us who are younger in ministry, when you see people celebrate Joshua Selman, you see people clap and they are happy, ushers, people are coming, there is this drive, this ambition, my God. And that ambition is what will lead you to a 40-day prayer and fasting. And you think just because you are fasting, it means you are correct. You may be sincere, but from day one, the motif is already corrupted. The motif is not the revelation of the Christ. It's an attempt to fight a complex you have been having for a long time. And so you have learned that the anointing is the cure for that complex. And you go up the mountain and sometimes you encounter demons and familiar spirits. And come down from that experience with something that will begin another cause of destruction. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place, take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Listen, the real secret of being in ministry is to forget about ministry and focus on your relationship with God. That is how to remain transgenerationally relevant. See, there are people who rise up and in certain seasons they are relevant. And you know, Men of God, let me share something with you, and I know you will agree with me. The world of men is a wicked world. It's like you have a time period of fame. Everybody will invite you everywhere. Men will suck you like an orange. You are in every conference, you are in every convention, and sometimes we are beguiled to think that because that window of opportunity is open, it's necessarily a fact that you have a good relationship with God. After a few years, you fade like a leaf, and the people who once said, make, become king over us will say, crucify him. They will push you aside and look for the next most important thing. So before you fall into the deception of men and members, stay close to the one that sticks closer than a friend. Church can fail. Members can love you today and hate you tomorrow. I'm not saying they are wrong. And I'm not saying it should be so. It's amazing how people leave God and run to men whose emotional vacillations cannot even be predicted. Oh, Apostle Joshua Selman, I love you. You have never seen me angry. You have never seen me hungry. You don't know what problems are in my life. You love what you are seeing. Let me go to the one who loves all of me. He has seen all of me and has chosen to love me with an everlasting love. Holy Ghost Holy Ghost 
Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, take your place. Listen, listen to me. I respond to an average of five to six hundred text messages every day. People sending me text messages from around the world. I wake up with text messages and call. My phone is never off. Even as I'm on stage here, it's on silent. And most of it is the accolades of men. What manner of a man of God are you? I just listened to your message. Apostle, can you come for this conference? And sometimes I keep these text messages and I just look at them. Hmm. This is what brings down mighty men. This is what destroys the great. This is what cut short the relevance of men. And you know, while, uh, while all that drama is happening, sometimes I go on YouTube myself and I'm watching all the videos, Joshua Selman, Joshua Selman, and I stare at it. I say, oh God, may this deception never get into my heart. May I never forget in my life that without you, I can do nothing. Deliver me from this demon called ministry and keep me loving you all the days of my life there is a call called ministry but there is a demon too called ministry the spirit of religion you will give up his presence a thousand times to maintain a show of being okay before men i hope you like what i'm saying you see you can fake this thing before men but there is the all-seeing eye of the ancient of days the one who marks the scripts of men and vets the sincerity of your passion it is not so much about your eloquence I believe me when God's jealousy comes upon your life even you you will see the gaps in your understanding and yet he will pick you all the same because in his economy he does not need creativity he needs yieldedness when he finds you, he will be the one to give you the grace for the creativity. When it has to do with the pursuit of God, creativity is not needed. It's your surrender and your hunger. It's when you need to legislate on behalf of his majesty. That is where creativity is needed. One of the biggest secrets in my life, I will tell you, is my love for God. It's not fasting alone. It's not prayer alone. It's not spiritual knowledge alone. Yes, I know you are always reading the Bible. But is it not because you have an itinerary that is packed full? So you are reading quickly because your ego is at stake. And you need to defend the perceptions people have about you. No, sir. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you change my life breathe on me I look to you for life change my life breathe on me I look to you for life listen <laughs> when you stand on stage and you begin to make bold claims that only a relationship should produce you will be disappointed many times our secret place is is absent of fellowship and yet we stand on stage and say oh my god my maker the one who will heal people here and there is a strange incense rising from your voice to heaven and heaven is saying when did this one start this is a strange i'm not used to you calling me this name you, you are not a person of the secret place from where did you start imagine a man i always give this example i'm sure there is a name reverend dan calls his wife that is a product of intimacy are we together now if he does not have a healthy relationship with her and stands on stage right now you're not used to calling your wife honey or sweetheart and just for the sake of your reputation you call her honey the way she will respond to you you too you will know you are lying 
what should be an object of intimacy is now a strange incense is is pungent because it was not from the purity of your heart how many of us can call upon God and says this is a familiar voice this is a voice whose altar is known and seen in the realm of the spirit do you not know that when you call upon him demons to hear they are witnesses of your communion your love for God please hear me it is good to be ambitious but I bring you to a place where your love for God must supersede your desire some of you now have your small groups your small fellowship and you're about killing yourself now because your ego wants to kill you leave all those things and focus on his presence listen to what I'm telling you it will never tire me to say it here I never had a desire for ministry bishop sir I never had a desire for fame or going around the world doing these things it still is not my desire till today you made me great it's a song I wrote for him you made me special you made me great I give all I have to you you made me great you made me special you made me great i give all i have to you my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you my best lord is everything i have my best lord I give all I have to you. This has been one of the few years that I've had the privilege to really rest. Aside from COVID, I don't spend two full weeks in a year at home. I sleep in the plane. I wake up there. I don't respond to up to 30% of the invitations that come because I cannot cope. And sometimes I'm so tired and I'm asking, why are you doing all this? Then I remember, it is not for fame, oh. it's not to make a name. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. Forget about greatness in the spirit if all you are looking for is a passion to outshine others a passion for a name so that they say joshua selman that great man oh no you miss it already i assure you the justice system of god vets your motive till he finds himself in you god is not a politician that you just come and play politics around your love and your passion for god listen to me Man of God, woman of God, hear me. I do not doubt the call upon your life. I do not doubt the fact that truly his grace is upon you. And make no mistakes. You are not even aware of how far his majesty can take you when he invests his jealousy upon your life. But this morning, leave ministry. Let's focus on that altar. No more prayer. Why? I am busy. I'm trying to reach the world no more prayer oh i have sons and daughters i must mentor and while all that activity is happening heaven is watching you and saying was this why you fasted five years ago was this why you rolled on the floor five years ago was this all you were looking for a jeep and a five-star hotel is that the circumference of your passion for me my best lord everything I have my best Lord I give all I have to you it is my desire to live as long as I can live serving the purposes of the kingdom but if I die today let it be that yes I did not finish my assignment but let it not be that I misled a generation that even when I'm there seated 
in heaven rejoicing at his feet let it be that every truth that the earth listens to from me is helping to introduce them to me my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you your love for god you are a worship minister and you are asking apostle how can i go around the nations you know every time people see me their first question is how can i get a double portion of this anointing and and in all fairness i don't mean to be sarcastic but many times it's just because they are disturbing me i just lay my hands and let them go even me i know nothing came on them even if they fell down it's just so that they will just allow me go otherwise they can tear my cloth or something so i just allow them but me and god we both know that nothing really happened there you know what it means to receive a man's grace you must receive his hunger too you must receive a man's love stop receiving impartations without finding out the hunger of men you will only be wasting your time your hunger and your passion is the bowl you receive to receive that anointing there are anointings when you receive you cannot sleep like a normal human being again so before you cry for that anointing ask yourself first am i that yielded that you can be tired and just when you are about to sleep his majesty comes and says get up we need to talk and for the next five hours you are with him while others are snoring you are crying and praying over people you do not know that's what it takes to be anointed my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you yes ago the lord told me son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you leave that celebrity ambition i am telling you please listen to me be careful who you listen to and be careful don't criticize people don't go around the body of christ fighting men of god don't do that whether you are right or wrong you will bring judgment on yourself i assure you correcting the body of christ is an office not everybody who observes wrong just goes around correcting no there is an office and the first requirement is not awareness it is love right now everybody is correcting everybody no we're all going to mess up and create another kind of error we will create another hybrid of error that would destroy younger generations coming please hear me you want to rise higher in the spirit you want to be given grace and power more than your prayer and fasting more than your bible study your heart years ago the lord asked me a question and said son can you die for me i know many of you will say yes i come from the north i know the meaning of that question i thought about it sincerely and i said no i've been persecuted many times for you but i don't know if i can die for you and god did something in my heart i stand before you Enugu, to tell you this man you see is already a dead man for for me to live is christ and if i die it is still gain when you see god using a man find out why don't just say oh this is wonderful no the price of life is death death is the currency you use to buy life so when you say you want life the demand is not money the demand is not your certificate the demand is death as proof of your love are we together now most of the challenges we have in the body of christ come because there is no fear of the lord not because there is ignorance the fear of the lord whether it is manipulation whether it is whatever it is a product of lack of the fear of god when you truly fear god with all your heart let me tell you sincerely please look at me 
when you fear God sincerely, you will not ask people to fast and then you are eating fish in your room. Are we together now? No. You are not going to ask for a vigil and then you are there sleeping too. Not because anybody will flog you. Your fear, the fear of the Lord insists that you are right and you are true. Can we pray over this? Can we turn what I've just said into a prayer point? Listen, I know that our time is gone, but in two minutes, I don't know how you are going to cry to God. Take this idol, this idol in my heart, this obsession for fame and power. Today, we have enemies that are needless in life and ministry because my ego was tongue. My reputation was tongue. Only dead men can carry God. Oh, the size of God is so heavy. If you are alive, it will kill you. Only dead men can carry him. Your love and your passion. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray in one minute from the depth of your heart. When you love the Lord, you will love his sheep. When you love the Lord, you will not only use members, you will love them sincerely. A pastor after his heart, a worship leader after his heart, a deacon after his heart, an apostle after his heart, a prophet after his heart. Purge my heart, oh God. Don't be embarrassed by your prayer. Don't be embarrassed by your cry. One minute we are praying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you Lord Lord I will worship you nothing has but you Lord Hallelujah Your love for him the grand secret to see his hand upon your life I love I love I love your presence I love I love I love your presence I love, I love I love you Jesus I love, I love I love your presence I love, I love uh -huh. Listen, when you love the Lord, you know that all I have belong to Him. Find a way of believing what I'm telling you. You can listen to the messages of any man of God you want to hear. You can put it in your ears and sleep overnight in an attempt to receive anointing. You will never get anything until heaven vets the sincerity of your motive. Your love and your passion for God. I love him with everything that is within me. 
believe me when I tell you this it is still an honor for me today to be doing that which I do for his majesty but it was never about it never about it when people were complaining about the pandemic because you know it enclosed people now of course I, I do not like the fact that people's lives were halted but for me I almost didn't know when the lockdown was over because it was a most cherished opportunity Lord this is an opportunity again to catch up on my love for you that ministry schedules may not even allow me to spend that time When all is said and done, please take it down for me. I feel like singing that song. Can you say go down my voice? When it's all is said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life? To live for truth did I live my life for you not the empires you built when it's all been said and done listen all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious joy in married clay, turning sinners into saints. And I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heavens my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone. do you love him simon bajona lovest thou me more than these man of god it is true that there is a great unction upon your life i'm not asking you if you can preach i know you can i'm not asking you if you can heal i know you can i'm not asking you if you can sing you're already a powerful worshiper i'm not asking you if you have the spirit of revelation we know you do i'm not asking you if you can prophesy your prophetic grace has been proven my question is to what degree do you love him? Woe betides the day that I exalt anything above him. Woe betides that day. May it never come and may it never happen. Not today, not in my lifetime. Number two, please bring the vessels. The second key, for time's sake, I thought I would give three, but I would just give two. Our time is gone. The second key to a life of power, a life of grace and glory is the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the power that comes from him Acts chapter 1 verse 8 I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings 
Your influence is all over me. Listen. The system of the kingdom is such that you cannot do the work of the kingdom by the strength of the flesh. The Bible already observes that by the strength of the flesh shall no man prevail. Ministry is a task that requires more than secular intelligence. You will face persecution. You will be misunderstood. God will give you instructions that will create controversy around your life. It will take more than psychological stamina to survive end time ministry. You will need an empowerment that comes from heaven. Every time God called people into the work of the ministry, he did not allow them go like that. He insisted until the power of the highest came upon them. In Acts chapter 1, when you read from verse 7, Jesus was mentoring them for 40 more days after his resurrection. And they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put within his care. Then verse 8 says, but you shall receive. Anything to receive can be rejected. You shall receive power after not before not during so the first thing you receive is not power it is a personality the holy ghost and then when his walkings prevails over your life the reward for that intimacy is power you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you the power does not make you a man of god the power does not make you a prophet the power does not make you an apostle the power does not make you a worshiper. The power makes you a witness. A witness is a validator of a claim. There is no need for a witness until there is a contention. In the court of law, when, you, when there is a contention over a claim, a witness is necessitated. And his assignment is to validate that which has been said. In this end time, God is looking for witnesses more than men of god more than apostles and prophets validators men and women who will bring the pride of nations to their knees and reveal a dimension of the excellency of the kingdom that dumbfounds principalities and powers like i said yesterday to come on the strength of our spiritual connection in a few minutes something is going to come upon your life an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. Our spiritual growth is based on relationship, but kingdom advance is based on covenant. That means that God finds a people and enters a personal covenant with them that becomes his access point to reveal that dimension on earth. And all through within the lifetime of those individuals, God will never manifest that possibility anywhere on earth in disalignment to those vessels. Understand what I'm teaching you. When it comes to the matters of the spirit and the anointing, I'm not teaching you an outsourced information. This is an office. I know what I'm talking about. One time, I started having encounters with the saints of old. Now, understand that every time we teach these things, the Bible is the foundational pattern for our spiritual growth. When we share these supernatural experiences, it's not to create a passion in you higher than your love for scripture. Are we together now? These are only systems that support the things that scripture had said. I remember I started having encounters 
with many of those you call the generals and they would come to me and share mysteries and some of them would share with me where they failed in their own generation I remember in one of these encounters a middle height man came to me and after talking the light that beamed from him and when we were done talking he turned and he was on his way going and I looked at him and I said you did not tell me your name sir and he looks at me and turns back and smiles and he said Paul and he turned and walked away I am a product of many anointings I am a product of many encounters years ago I started searching for those who carried the mantle of the generals because I felt that there was a burden upon my life for this generation and I wanted to become a system of preservation and continuity of the program of God and one of the people I met began to tell me a story you've heard me say it many times that before Smith Wigglesworth would die he called Lester Sumro and said do not die with this mantle when you are old find young men and transfer this grace upon them and when he laid hands on me he said you will become a continuity of these graces this is like a relay it has come from one person to the other the chiefest of all encounters was when the Lord Jesus himself now appeared to me we're about to pray something will happen now when I begin to say what I'm saying that's why I say be sensitive because God gave me a promise and there is a covenant I have with him when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me I was flat on the floor light in its brilliance came from him to me he did not speak with his mouth but he was talking to me I knew what he was saying then in one of the encounters help that gentleman please the Lord spoke to me and said son from today I give you my presence as a gift and then I saw this huge angel and the Lord said this angel will walk with you he's called the angel of the Lord's presence and he will be responsible for the signs the wonders the miracles listen to me dear men of God the Lord gave me an instruction years ago and he said every nation every city and every territory I send you to among the many things you will do there make sure the light that came from me to you there must be someone in that meeting that the lights that came from me to you will also come upon those people Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Open up the gates. Listen after that encounter I took my Bible and I started understanding things I never studied there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation I would go to bed and angels will come to my room and open my Bible to specific scriptures I don't share a lot of my encounters because I don't want people to create idolatry out of these things. Our assignment 
is to promote Jesus and to lift him. Tonight is a miracle service. We are still going to pray for people. But please hear me. For someone here in the next few minutes, something is about to come upon your life and your destiny that will so change you in a way and manner that will surprise you. Many of you will go back to your churches and you will marvel and wonder at the dimension of the spirit that you begin to walk in. This is not for personal or vain glory. This is to equip us so that we stop becoming noisemakers. We become people with evidence indeed. There is too much talking in the body of Christ. I say this respectfully. I didn't used to walk very strongly in the prophetic. Here and there I would give a word of knowledge. But I heard them criticizing a man of God called William Branham. Men of God always talked about that man and tore him and tore him as if he missed God and missed everything. And one night I was watching his video and I said, my God, look at the humility of this man. There are few men on earth that I know today, including myself, who come close to the humility of this man with respect to the kind of glory that he carried. And yet people are there tearing the man down. And suddenly something happened to me. Light right from him in the laptop where I was watching. And something came upon me. And for a period of about 30 minutes, it was going down my body. I said, what is happening to me? And by the next meeting I went to, the heavens were open in a way and manner. I received a grace, not only a grace that reveals, a grace that creates. So that what has no business happening is made to happen. Please don't think what I'm saying is pride. I wish I'm not the one to. I hope you don't misunderstand me. I, I, I do not trivialize anybody's grace here. I'm only sharing with you something by the privilege of the election of grace. I have been to almost every campground in this nation. I am a product of many anointings. I've had the privilege of and the honor of receiving graces from fathers, from mighty men and women of God, dead and alive. That anointing was invested upon me not for my sake, but for the sake of God's people and every time we come for conferences like this among the many things that happen is an opportunity to distribute graces that are either dormant or vacant within a land to the end that there be a greater establishment of the purposes of God not to show that a man of God is anointed but hear me there is a spiritual protocol to receiving the anointing you do not receive from a colleague you do not receive from a friend there is a non-negotiable law of spiritual transference you must discern not in the flesh in the spirit and Elisha said my father my father the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof I know that men of God sadly have idolized this issue of impartation you know and made a lot of nonsense and immaturity out of it but I tell you the truth if all you see is a man in the flesh, you will not receive anything. Your spirit must be opened to receive something that will change your life. We have five, ten minutes to do this. I'm going to pray on this oil as a point of contact. Please help that person there. There are angels that signify dimensions. There are angels that signify anointings. 
there are angels that signify revelations revelations 1 verse 1 the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto his servant john he sent it and signified it by his angel many of you will be drinking into ancient fountains dimensions you have seen in your dreams you have seen in your visions some of you you have seen it for many years and you've been asking lord when will this come i open to you by the spirit a portal of higher spiritual reality Now arise, O oh Lord, come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might, and then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness, we celebrate your love. Spirit of the living God, I pray over this oil. I only stand by the privilege of the election of grace. And I pray over your precious people in this place. Lord, I pray that this oil will activate virgin dimensions in the spirit. I pray that ancient fountains will be opened over your people. And that everyone under the sound of my voice, upon whom this oil comes, let it be a strange impartation. Let the spirit of grace and the spirit of glory, let the unction for signs, for wonders, for miracles, territorial anointings, rest upon your people. Please, please, I want you to respect all the servants of God. Don't come around them. Just leave them where they are in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, they have the option whether or not they can touch the oil or not, or they can receive the oil. Let's give them that honor as servants of God. But wherever you are, the oil will be there. You will just come out to your row. So, guys, you will just stand in front of the various rows from the front. Just come out, touch and then go back come out touch and go back let there be a few ushers for those who will be under the anointing the ushers can receive the impartation last can they open this You will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life is changed You will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life is changed In the name of Jesus Christ, we anoint these oils. Praise the Lord. Now, listen, hold on, please. Um, Reverend has requested that it should be given um, a bowl. I would respectfully honor it. And so, please, some of these people, especially to serve the ministers, please allow a man of god a father of faith so please the fathers can serve just please give give one of any of the pastors thank you so much sir we honor your humility sir thank you please make sure the all the people holding this if you're doing that please withdraw it let a man of god you you they don't need to come out you can just walk around with it for them there if it's possible 
but in the name of Jesus please come out now some of you as soon as you touch that oil please stand turn and face them okay go ahead please touch it and then turn back to your seat in the name of Jesus the power of the Holy Ghost is coming upon you as you touch it you return back begin to pray in the spirit Shake barata kato shala barata barata. Shebranda kaparuta shala kraska dadash. New dimensions. someone begin to pray and prophesy over your life and your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ speak over your ministry I step into new dimensions of kingdom relevance great power for the journey ahead in the name of Jesus I decree and I prophesy by the mighty hand of God signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, Shabbat <laughs> shalom. 
This man, come. Lift your hands. Take that grace in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands here. I'm seeing fire come on you. Take that grace now in the name of Jesus. Celaboats, Cabarandas, Cabris, Catabareta, Silla Parutias, Ebretis, Baratus. Please pray, don't be distracted. My friend, lift your hands. Take that grace. This is your prayer. Prophesy over your ministry. My ministry can never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Salvation for His Majesty. The miracle ministry. No more stagnation. No more delay. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of revelation. The spirit of power upon my life. Numerical growth. Financial growth. Access to the power of God. Lift your hands. I'm still going to speak in the night, but this is a pastor's session. In the name of Jesus, I want you to believe every word that is coming upon your life. For if you will believe, you will be surprised at what happens to you. Every dead ministry or every dying ministry, hear the word of the Lord. I speak to you. Talita Kumi, arise in the name of Jesus. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire. Prayer fire. The grace to fast. The grace to study. Take that anointing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. One of the tools that the devil is using in this end time to cripple ministries is lack of the availability of financial resources. There are many people who love God with all their hearts, but the devil keeps crippling the finances of well-meaning churches so that they will not have the wherewithal to preach. But I stand tonight in the name of Jesus and I prophesy to you, as surely as the Lord God lives, I invoke upon your life the mystery of divine supplies. Strange supplies. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the south and the north. Everywhere your supplies are in this season, I command it into your bands. Listen. There are many of us, you love the Lord, but there are things that are eating your life. They are making you not to be a man of solid character. You love God, but these things continue to destroy your ministry. Every altar that sponsors anything that is not of the Christ, destroying your reputation in ministry. I command those altars, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire.
Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Members come to your church. They receive of the miracles. They receive of the word. And then they leave. They come but the grace that keeps. The grace that stays people is not there. In the name of Jesus. I speak over your life. Receive the grace for retention. Hallelujah. A man of God must be sound in doctrine. A man of God must be able to teach truth with clarity and balance. There's someone here you have been praying for the spirit of revelation. Sincerely because you love your people. I pray for you like fire from heaven. May that grace rest upon you now. Now, I thought I'll be able to do that prayer in the night, but the Lord is asking me to do it here. There is a grace for signs and wonders. Please hear me. Now, many people can claim they walk in miracles. Miracles are not stories. They are provable realities here and now. Sincerely, it may not be everybody who will take this grace, but from the depth of my spirit, I stand in agreement with the leaders, the men and the women of God. That grace that commands miracles, signs and wonders, Lord upon us many ministers here, in the name of Jesus, take that fire now. Take that fire now. I activate the healing grace, the healing anointing like fire. Let it come upon your life. Hallelujah. Hold on, please. Listen to me. Please listen, we're wrapping up. I want to plead with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do all within your power to invite your loved ones for tonight's miracle service. I'm going to share with you something and there is a grace that I'm going to pray for you for. We're not only going to celebrate miracles tonight, but I pray from the depth of my heart that there are activations of the gifts of the Spirit that will happen tonight. Very strange dimensions of the Spirit will come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray finally before I drop the mic. If you are in ministry here and no one has been able to discern your grace to place a demand on your grace and to honor that grace listen we are ministers of God but we are humans too your comfort is lies in the fact that men can see what God is doing in your life they can discern it and they can extend hands of fellowship and hands of reward are we together now you cannot indefinitely live under the atmosphere of discouragement. Let me pray for someone. I don't know what has caged your ministry and refused you from rising to a point of kingdom notoriety for the sake of his majesty. But in the name of Jesus, I open that door now. <laughs> Hallelujah. So please, I will beckon on the pastors as much as you can. Invite your members or at least your leaders, some of the key leaders in your ministry, so that they can come and receive this impartation. And tonight, I'm not just going to be praying alone. Something prophetic will happen here. In the course of my ministration, I'm going to invite a few seasoned servants of God here, and they are going to be speaking over the territory. Let me tell you, whatever is dead in your life must come back to life in this country. Do not forget that you are coming with your requests. For your loved ones who are not within this city or around the southeast and may not make it, please call them to send it by way of text and then you write it. When people come, somewhere in the service will receive it in the bowls and we are going to pray here. 
and in the name of Jesus I'm telling you this what will happen in your life will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ I'm going to be praying for the sick tonight and then we're going to be relieving miracles and particularly dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus I'll see you again bye